So now that we have the part oriented and we have the stock set up, um, it's time to decide how we're going to machine it and get it ready for machining by choosing our tool paths, etc. Before we do that, um, we need to look at what we're dealing with and decide how, what tool we're going to use, etc. So we, you can see that we have um, large circles here. We have um, some medium circles here and then a bunch of these small circles and then a couple of slots. The first thing that you'd want to do is decide how large they were. If you design the part, then you know already how large they are. But if someone else designed that, you need to analyze it and decide um, what tools you're going to use. And so zooming in, I'll show you kind of how to analyze. And we've done this before already when measuring the part. You just go analyze um, distance. And maybe we can select the center of the circle here and go to the outside edge here and click and... Uh, I think I selected something wrong. So I'm going to go analyze distance again, select the center of the circle here, select the outside edge here, and then look at the delta. And the delta is in the y direction is 0 0.098. That's the radius of the circle. And so the diameter of the circle would be 0.196. And 0.196 is a dimension we use a lot in our machining and that dimension is the dimension for our 3 16th inch rivets also it is the same dimension for a number 10 screw and so we can swap out rivets and screws and that's just why we choose that dimension of 0.196 in fact we have a dedicated drill bit in our mills used to drill that size of hole then the other holes we could measure um, the larger holes here are for um, bearings and they're about um, one and an eighth inch in diameter and then these are just access holes and they're a little um, close to a half inch in diameter and they're meant um, for to allow a, a tool like an allen wrench to fit through and then these slots um, were a little bit over a quarter of an inch and they're basically designed, um, designed to hold a quarter inch bolt for um, a tensioner so once you've dis once you've determined the, the size of all of the holes, et cetera, you can decide how you're going to machine it. So the small holes, we're just going to machine by drilling, um, using our dedicated drill bit to drill all of the small holes. But the larger um, features, we're going to use an end mill. An end mill is um, just the cutting bit that we'll use. But we're going to use a size that can do everything so we can reduce the number of tool changes. A common size of end mill that we use in our shop is just a quarter inch end mill. Um, we try to ensure that when we design parts that the inside radius um, is no smaller than an eighth of an inch on all corners. So here is an inside corner and so if you use a quarter inch end mill it can make a radius here of an eighth of an inch. And so when we do all of our little fillets in our design, we design the radius of those fillets to be a minimum of an eighth of an inch. Now, in specific, maybe very special cases, we need a smaller radius. We'd have to jump to a smaller end mill to be able to do that, but they're more delicate and it takes a lot more time. So to reduce the amount of time, we use just a quarter inch end mill to do, in fact, most of our milling. One other nice thing about the quarter inch end mills is they're pretty cheap. Um, they if you end up breaking one, it's not very expensive. Whereas if you break a half inch end mill, it might cost you in the $50, $60 range. If you break a um, quarter inch end mill, they're, you know, 10, 12 bucks. And so we tend to break a few bits. And so we try to um, use a size that we can machine at a pretty quick rate, but also um, isn't so delicate that it will um, break. And then if it does break, um, by you know some machining problem which everyone seems to run into every once in a while um, it's not a terribly expensive mistake 